Insomnia from UnrealTech.net here. Last episode we started working on some base classes for the GUI system that will allow us to create, recreate, and change our GUI at will by creating base, aka parent classes, and procedural buttons and such. Today I decided we're going to power through some functionality to allow game pads and keyboards to use the widgets, not just the mouse. Uh, and as well we'll be able to do that on 3D widgets which is my goal in the end so just like a proper AAA game once we get through that we will continue working and powering our way through all the base classes and then we can just knock out the different menus we need using those base classes one two three easy we don't need to recreate any logic we'll just reuse all of them since they'll be procedural so we'll create everything we need to make the game operational at the core level again so that we can actually set it up and play games and then we can start adding features. I've already got some vehicles and weapons planned. So as always, open your project and remember, create your way. So one little side note, I uh, created some nice little icons we'll be able to use this morning while waking up. So they'll be in the project for download at unrealtech.net the next time I upload an update. So we're going to start off today in our parents folder with something that we're going to need um, for gamepad and keyboard support. I know 4.9 have kind of tried to add a little bit of keyboard support. However, um, 410, it looked like there was some updates for gamepad support, but I haven't researched into that, and there hasn't been enough time for people to research into that. They're still obviously trying to fix all the bugs that came with it. So uh, we're going to work with uh, a system just that I know that works that I learned. So we're going to right-click, we're going to go to Blueprints, and we're going to create a blueprint, uh, a blueprint interface, which we're going to call BPI... Now we're going to call this uh, focus, uh, or we'll go widget focusable. So this will allow us to focus on widgets using a gamepad or keyboard um, by essentially replicating what the mouse does um, only using blueprints. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need a way to um, press a button. And so I'm going to call this um, false press. So it'll be as if we pressed a button with the mouse. It will just be um, using uh, a gamepad or whatever in the instance that we're going to use this blueprint interface. And so if you know how BPIs work, um, sometimes you only need ones like this and so this is all we'll need we're gonna add another one called false um i guess unpress would be the inverse we're gonna need another one called um set um widget is false focused and this needs uh three inputs which will all be booleans, one, two, three, which will be um, new false focused. I guess she, fo yeah, focused. Um, B skip UI sounds. And uh, the last one we will call, what would make the most sense? Uh, probably, let's see, B, um, should focus on last child. So we'll need those. Now we'll need, uh, similar to false press and unpress, we're going to need two functions, which will be, um, I guess we'll just call it focused, uh, next widget. And we'll just duplicate that, which we can't do. So we'll just add a new one. And this will be focused uh, prev, so previous widget. Um, and now, if we're working with values, you know, uh, like uh, scroll boxes and the such, where you're changing a value. So let's say we were increasing state of resolution, or we were changing classes or something. We're gonna need a function uh, called um, 
widget value um, ink uh, increment. Ink will just confuse me. And then we'll need another one, obviously, the inverse uh, widget value decrement. So that'll be the inverse. We need another one called um, steel focus um, from navigation bar. And this needs an input called B is bar on or at top. And then we need one more called uh, back focused widget. So that should be everything. Uh, we can compile and save. And we're going to need to create a uh, macro library for our menu. So I'm going to create it in our parents folder here. So we'll go blueprints, blueprint macro library. Um, the parent class, I like to use object, not actor. So just expand it and select object. Select, I'm going to call this uh, BP, BPM underscore um, base menu macros. I always just call it base menu because we know what a BPM is obviously macros. Actually, I'm just going to call that. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So the first one we are going to, um, it's going to be a check and we're going to check if it is, um, if it's being focused somehow through our blueprint interface. So we're going to call this, um, is widget, um, being, uh, focused uh, false falsely 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 I guess <laughs> I don't even know how to spell that uh, you can blame me for that so uh, what we're gonna need here we're gonna need a user widget which we're gonna test if it is so let's add a new input and this is gonna be user widget reference so this will be a uh, widget, widget to test, I guess. And we're gonna need a player controller reference. Player controller, whoops. Not the BP player controller, just a regular player controller reference. And this is gonna be the uh, player controller. So whoever owns the widget essentially. And then we needed an output obviously returning um, if it is or is not. So B um, is being focused. So to check this, um, actually none of these macros are gonna be very hard. Um, we're gonna need to make a macro to finish this, but we're gonna take the player controller and we're gonna cast to our BP player controller which isn't there so we just need to save control s player controller cast to bp and it's not showing up so we need to go find it and compile it bp player controller don't crash so just compile and save that oh we need to add all i forgot i deleted um my intermediate and config folder trying to get this to run so I need to re-add all those in anyways now it should work so now we just want to cast to BP player controller there we go all right back to contact sensitive so if you ever have something that's not working like that that's always the reason it just needs to recompile so we're gonna convert that to a peer cast and so that's all we need for that right now because we need another macro to finish this so um Actually, sorry, we just drag its self in. So all we do is we go widget to test and we go, um, sorry, I'm on our player controller. We need a function that basically um, does the same thing. So on our player controller, let's add a variable called um, false focus widget 
and this is going to be of the type uh, BPI uh, widget focusable. Looks like we already started one before. Maybe that was just me messing around. Um, we want it to be private, however. And then we can compile and save, and it won't have a default value, obviously. Um, that should be all we need. So now we just need to create a function called, um, well, what did we just call that? Because it's essentially the same thing. Is widget being focused falsely? So that's exactly what I'm going to call it. Or we'll just go, uh, is widget, um, is widget falsely, um, focused widget. So is, the, is the widget being, that's focused being falsely focused, um, through our system or not. And we need an input, which is going to be again, the test widget. So that will be a user widget reference which will be our uh, widget to test, same as before. Ah, shoot, that bugs me. There we go. And we need the same output, uh, what do we call it? Whoa, what happened there? Everything kind of got weird. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Uh, B is being focused. All right, and that will be a Boolean. So in here, all we need to do, and also it's gonna be a peer function. And we might as well give it a category, like uh, GUI menus, yeah. All right, so uh, we just take the widget to test and we check if it's equal. We wanna check if it's equal to our false focus widget. So we do a get and we'll need to convert it. And then we just plug that into the return node. Simple as that. So uh, we'll just comment it, uh, handles, checking if the current widget um, being focused is using our false focus system. So we will compile and save that. We'll go back to here. Now what we can do is we can um, we can actually call that off of our player controller. So off of the return here, I'm gonna go um, is widget falsely focused widget. We want the widget to test, be the widget to test, and B is being focused to the output. So that's a macro right in itself. Just wanna clean this up a little bit. I, I do like 410's new uh, alignment features, but uh, I haven't quite gotten used to them yet. I played with them in the preview, but I, uh, like I said, I, I haven't, I haven't found perfect uses for them yet. The straight connections is nice, but at the same time, um, I don't know. It's not as useful as like double clicking for the reroute, for example. All right, so we'll leave it something like that. I'm quite happy with that. All right, so we're gonna save that. Now we need to uh, add a new one. We're gonna have animations at some point, so we're gonna need to, um, and obviously if we're handling that with a gamepad or a keyboard, it's gonna be, a, we're gonna need a system in place that uh, we can't just use the regular setup. And this, this goes all the way you could, to consoles and stuff too. If you want to uh, make a first person shooter for consoles, um, this will be uh, a good start. Um, so what we want to do is um, get uh, animation position new. So we want to get the uh, newest animation position. And uh, what we need for this one, we need, let's see here, we need an output, which will be of type float, which is going to be called um, anim, we'll go short, pause, new. So animation position new. And we're going to need a boolean called b should increment. So should we increment the animation position or not? Um, we are gonna need three floats, one, two, three. The first one's gonna be uh, current or Kerpus. We'll keep it as short as possible. Um, anim speed. And uh, D time or 
we could go time D. Well, let's go uh, delta time. So the change in time. I wish you could add those characters, like the actual delta character. That'd be nice. So we're going to do a uh, quick little bit of math in here. Nothing too extreme, I promise you. It'll be very quick and easy. Um, so what we're going to start off with is... Just getting my reference to this math here. Um, we're going to need... Let's see here. We're going to take our Boolean and let's do a select float. And we want to select from 1 or negative 1. Are we playing forwards or reverse? And we want to take that and we want to multiply. Let's see if I can remember these commands. I haven't used my keyboard in weeks for this stuff. Uh, not, I'm thinking all of them got erased. Because nothing's working. Mm, that one works. Interesting. I had all my float math in there. Anyway, okay, so we want to multiply. Uh, just the star symbol. So we want to float by a float. And we want to multiply this by the animation speed. Let's see if we can put this here, keep it a little bit cleaner. So we want to multiply those two together. And then we want to multiply again. Just going to move the output out of the way. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, then we want to multiply whether we're playing forward or reverse, we still need to multiply it by delta time, so we're going to multiply it by delta time. So it doesn't matter if you're playing um, an animation forward or reverse, it still needs to be multiplied by the change in time. So those get multiplied. And then we need to um, add the result. Whoops. So we want to add float plus float. We want to add the result um to the current position like so let's see if we can clean this up um maybe if we bring everything down oops I will remove that pin. Yeah, that'll work. And then all we need to do is clamp the final value. And it will always be between uh, 0 and 1, or it needs to be. So that's why we need to clamp it, because obviously we can get negative numbers. So clamp float between 0 and 1, and then just return the value. Simple as that. So let's see, clamp flow, let's try this straighten. Alignment, straighten connections, I like it. Let's try that again, straighten connections. Nice, okay, cool. So yeah, there you go. So um, we, uh, depending if we increment the, uh, the, uh, the position or not, uh, will depend on one or negative one. And then we, multiply that value by the speed which we then multiply by the delta time and I'm just double checking my math and then we add it to the current position I believe that is right yeah then clamp and and then return so I'm just gonna save and we'll move on to the the last one and this one's very short so add new macro this will be um, get focus uh, focusable um, widget from uh, from uh, we'll go from array so what we're gonna have here obviously array means we need an integer which will be the uh, index and we need I don't believe we created Oh, we did, I believe. S, focus, child. Yeah. So, yeah, the structure, focus, child info that we created yesterday, I believe that's the uh, structure we want, and that is going to be an array. And that will be our, um, this will be our info array. And then we want an output, which will be our BPI widget focusable, not an array. And this will be, um, 
focus focusable widget out so what we do here is we do an array get plugin still haven't fixed that plugin the plug in the two wires and let's try straightening that kind of liking that and then we want to break this need like a hot key for that that'd be nice and then we just take the um the widget to focus into the focusable widget out and bpi focus interface is not compatible with bpi okay oh i know what it is because we didn't do this right we need to go back to our parents because we did create this but ah yes right we started this we created it as a placeholder but we um but then i recreated it um in full now so all we need to do is change this to bpi whoops bpi widget focusable from bpi focus um so that's in our structure s underscore focus child info then save that and close and then just in case we had any references to bpi focus first of all let's check for um redirectors we're good so we're just going to delete that and if there's any references we want to replace it with a new one but there's not so we'll just force delete check for redirectors again and we're good so uh let's go back to actually that was oh yeah we need to connect that so go back and Oops, not the BPI, the uh, BPM. So now that should connect up. Yep, yeah, there we go, perfect. So now you guys are gonna hate me because I'm gonna wanna straighten these all out all the time. So we'll save that and we are done with the uh, BPMs and BPIs uh, for now anyway. So I figure we might as well continue with um, all of these uh, modular and procedural uh, menus and buttons because we're going to use them to create the main menu, the character cl and class selection screen, um, game settings, um, gameplay options, uh, server list, hosting games, choosing game modes, stuff like that. And we're going to use it over and over and over again. So let's continue working on the widget modular button because uh, buttons are pretty important. I'm going to rename this um, to my references just so that I don't get confused. I'm going to rename this to widget button bar, buttons bar because we're creating a bar of buttons. And now it's saying I need to compile the lobby before I can save that. So I'll go back there. There we go. All right. So, uh, and I want to rename this horizontal box to container because it's going to contain all our buttons and make sure it's a variable. Um, that'll clean our graph up a bit. And I kind of just left this, I said we were going to continue on it next time. So I kind of just left it in this kind of half, half done state, I guess, if you will. So let's clean this up a little bit. So this creates a button for each index in buttons. Then it adds the buttons to uh, our container evenly spaced. Then, um, then we uh, bind um, each, well, I guess bind the current index button um, to on button, is it on button? On modular button bar clicked, on modular button bar clicked, um, events. Uh, event, uh, I guess that'd be a custom event, and then override its color. And overriding its color will make more sense once we get a little bit further into this logic. So we'll just uh, set that up there so it's nice and neat. I don't like 
like I used to be able to turn these on and off. I like I dislike that they got rid of that. All right, so I'm just gonna reorganize this a little bit. I feel this should be like that, so we should probably bring this over and then go like so. Make that one taller, no, no big deal. All right, so we got that. Um, so let's give it an entire comment. Oh, right, I forgot we needed to do something else. Once it's completed, let's do a reroute node. And let's reroute all the way to the end here. Because now that we've created that stuff, we can actually, um, we can actually do some things. Um, let's compile and save. This needs to be reparented. I just need to remember which class. So that would be our widget menu base, which we put under our parents menu base folder. So I'm going to rename that one as well. I'm going to call it widget underscore um, menu panel base. I should give these uh, these base um, widgets like W base or something as a prefix. So I don't confuse them. Um, in fact, I might start doing that. I'm gonna go W base maybe, or just W W B W underscore B base. Just so that I can, so let's go BW, base widget. I like that. So base widget, menu panel base. And if we go to our buttons base, we're gonna have our, uh, we can get rid of base and we can just call this uh, BW, uh, or base widget buttons bar that makes a bit more sense to me now serverless needs to be compiled it's complaining about everything so we go to our serverless we'll compile that compile save we never finished the, we never started the logic for that either but i want to get all this stuff done first so um our Buttons bar needs to be reparented to that. So again, if you forget, file reparent blueprint, and then BW uh, menu panel base. That way, we'll be able to use stuff from it, which we are going to do right now. And what we're going to use is a function called. If we go into here, I don't believe we've created it. No, so we're going to create it called um, set widget for fake focusing. And uh, this one's pretty short, but it needs some input. So we need uh, one, two, whoops, one, two, three. Uh, the first one's an integer and it will be our option index. And then we want B skip UI sounds and then um, B should B should come on should all right spell it right on the fifth time should uh, last child focus and we also need nope no outputs I don't believe so what we need to do here is um, go straight into a, another function. So uh, let's create a function called update um, current uh, widget fake focused. So focusing and focused. And I'm gonna drag that right in here because that's the first thing we're gonna call and it's not here, so we can just connect it like that and we'll update it when we get back from finishing this one. So um, the update one, it needs three uh, inputs as well. They need to be Booleans, however. 
I should have said that first. So we're gonna want um, B is new focus. We're gonna want uh, B skip UI sounds and B should, I don't know why I can't spell should, should last child um, focus. All right, so in this one, we go straight into a branch and that branch's condition is going to be, um, actually we're gonna need to create a little helper uh, macro library. So let's go to our blueprints. I'm gonna set this color to green. And we had func underscore macro underscore libs where we were putting stuff. Oh, we made some BPM helper macros. Let's see, do, oh, we did create it is valid array index. So we get the length, we check if it's equal or greater than zero, or if it's less than uh, the length and perfect. Yeah, so we already have that. There's a lot more that we're gonna need in the end, but that's all we need for now. So never mind then. Uh, all we need to do then is just simply drag back and type that in uh, valid, valid, is valid array index and so what are we going to check well we created a focus array so that is going to be our array that we're going to that we're going to check and that's our uh, s focus child um, info and uh, we need an index obviously so we need to create a variable which is going to be called a uh, focused index so the currently focused widget, and that'll be an integer. Um, and we want it to be transient. We want it to be zero filled at load. So compile and save that. The default value of zero is fine. And then just plug that into, oops, into the index to test. And we'll separate those a little bit, bring them in like so. That should work out pretty nicely. So, um, what we need to do now is we're actually going to need, um, did we create under parents, EPM base menu, yeah, macro library, and, okay, never mind, yeah, we, we created those, I'm totally confusing myself here, so, um, what we're going to do in this case is we need to do the same thing. Um, bring both of these over. So just copy and paste them. And so this is under the true condition and we want to um, get focusable widget from array that one we just created and the index. And then we want to take this out and um, this will allow us to um, use blueprints to focus in on a widget. So we need to um, drag off here and we should be able to, ooh, I believe, however, we can't use a blueprint interface, however, if we don't set it. So go to our class settings and add BPI widget focusable and compile and save. Now we can drag off of the the BPI um, output and we can call any of those BPIs. So we want um, set widget is false focused like so and it'll be an interface call if true. So only if it's a valid array index and these just plug in should focus last child, skip UI sounds and new false focus. And I really dislike how those are not straight. And it looks like they're not going to be ever. Looks a little bit better, I guess. So yeah, just like so. 
not peer or anything so we can compile and save and we can go back to the one we were working on we can close that um just going to need the set so we called that it's already up is that a 410 thing where it automatically um updates all the pins and everything i, I never noticed that before it's kind of nice so um skip ui sounds go to skip ui sounds should last focus child goes to should last focus child um new b is new focus is going to be false because we're just updating and we're going to want the index to be rerouted um we're going to use this multiple times so let's create another reroute and we want to do a check go right here uh is valid array index And the array we're going to test is our focus array. This actually wouldn't be focus. This would be focus and bowl. So an array of things that could be focused. Um, if you want to be nitpicky like I am. And we want skip UI sounds to be uh, rerouted as well. Because we're going to be doing more. And B should last child focus should be rerouted as well. Let's see if we can get these in here without looking half-assed. I think it's just gonna have to look half-assed. All right, so we will reroute those way over here because they will come into use later. So next up, all we do is we set focused index over here what do we set it to well off of here we're going to do oh off of here we're going to do a int select or select in sorry and we're going to select between the index and negative one if we get negative one um then obviously our index goes to negative one and it's not valid so the return value goes to there that's what we're setting it to let's bring this back so this is nice and clean in fact we can probably just go like that uh -huh. and then just move this uh maybe up should switch those but oh well um that'll work just fine so we set the focus index and then we um yeah then we update it again i believe so just copy this function and paste so all we're doing here is we are setting the widget we're updating we're setting the index and then we're updating again so um basically just updating widgets you need to go through the process um, as many of you know, widgets uh, don't necessarily always just update on their own. Sometimes you need a way to call to update them. Um, oh, I'm forgetting this should be last child. This isn't B skip UI sounds. And now it's a new focus. So it starts off not focused. Then we set it as the focused index and then we set it as the current focus. So like so so like so um yeah so that one is good so compile and save i have to remember to use f7 i told myself i was going to do that to save time uh what next where were we even going with this i don't even remember oh it was on the button bar wasn't it yes right so all we need to do now is drag off of here and we want to set uh, set widget set widget is false focused I believe nope that's not it um, set focus set widget for Fake focusing is false focused. Nope. It must be set widget four. 
Yes, let's hit OK. And then we want to skip UI sounds. We don't want to uh, focus on the last child. And the option index is negative 1. So that's when that is completed. And this is part of this whole loop here. It comes at the end, though, however. So now we can make our whole comment box. I'm going to bring this up just because it annoys me like that. Alrighty. So let's give all this a comment. So uh, what is this? So on event construct, um, we add our um, buttons as set in variable uh, buttons, I guess, put that in quotes. Um, add our buttons as set in the variable buttons to our bar of buttons, hence button bar, or buttons bar, and bind their press events. This is whether it's a gamepad, a keyboard, or a mouse. Um, to um, be forwarded to um, any class listening for um, for the events, the bound events, I guess would be better, but that's good enough. So um, we need to set up a few more things in here very quickly. So uh, let's see, class settings, we did not implement this interface in here either. Um, it should be inherited. Oh yeah, okay, it is inherited, perfect. So what we need is, um, since our buttons are gonna be horizontally, then remember we set up the uh, previous and next, then what it should do is it should um, focus other widgets in their parent menu, and remember we set up increment and deck, decrement that should um, focus and select widgets in the bar so that'll make more sense here when we actually create it um, so that one I'm gonna leave right there but I'm gonna create a new um, actually it's not a custom event it will be um, event next focused next and we want uh, event prev, prev, previous. So next and previous, what are they gonna do? They will, we need to create, um, it needs to call an event dispatcher, which comes from our parent class. So we need to go to our parent class, our, um, base widget menu panel base. I guess I don't need the base there anymore. But anyways, we need an event dispatcher called um, on nav. So when we're navigating um, different buttons or widgets, depending, um, um, basically we want to leave this. This can be a button, a widget, uh, a value, etc., and we need a boolean, which will be uh, B is leaving from first up. And while we're here, we might as well add a, another one, which is just uh, just an event called on back button pressed. So this will be anytime we press a back button on any of our widgets. So let's compile and save that. Go to our button bar, compile and save that. Now we will be able to call that um, event. So all we gotta do is call on navbar wants to leave this like so. And its target can be self because of its parent class. That's how the inheritance works. And we're not leaving from first up here, but we are when we go previously. Um, so that's false, that's true, just like so. And then we also want to do uh, increment. So let's go event increment. Increment, there we go. 
and event decrement. And these ones, let's see, set um, focus. not from here it's I believe oh no okay that's right except it's not is it's uh, set focus it's four got confused between those two again so uh, one and two we're gonna use it twice um, we're gonna need a little bit of room here so let's bring these out. So uh, I don't believe we've created this yet, but we're gonna we're gonna take our whoops, not our buttons index. We're gonna need our uh, from our parent class our focus get focused index. So as you can see, we can even grab variables right out of our parent class. Works just like blueprints and we need to get array get focusable array so the array of focusable um children essentially well that's what it is um but i don't believe we created uh the bpms that we need which would be increment no so we need to actually create those now so let's go back to our save while we're at it uh blueprints let's go to our funk macro libraries and our helper help helper macros and let's add a new macro which is going to be um, array index increment and we're going to need its uh, its inverse which is going to be array index decrement and this will get these will get used over and over again hence why we're putting them in a macro library so these are very easy in the uh, in the increment, we just need an input of type integer, which is going to be our current index. And we need a wildcard array, which is going to be array in. And all we do is we take the current index, we add one, and then we do a majolo on it to find the remainder. And then we take the array in and we get the length of it. And we we majolo that, uh, the current index plus one by the length. And we check if it's equal to zero. So our comparison double equal. And if it is, we need outputs. I totally forgot about the outputs. Um, <laughs> if we're incrementing it, obviously we're changing the value. So we need an integer, which will be a uh, new index at one in as it's incremented, which will be this value. And we also need a Boolean called B um, wrap, B is wrapping around. So if you know how arrays work, that's one we're wrapping back around. So I kind of want to organize these. Love it. Nah, it doesn't work out so well. All right, so, uh, so that's increment now we just need to do decrement and it is extremely extremely similar um i wish i could duplicate this can i duplicate it here i can perfect so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take increment i'm gonna duplicate it and i'm gonna call this array index decrement just like we just had it because it has the exact same things current index array in new index b is wrapping around and uh its math is a little bit different, but not much. All we need to do is take the current index and we need to add 
and we want to add the length of the array minus one and then we need to do our majolu that's the uh, percent sign if you're not aware and that um, we majolu the length so don't get confused by the minus there and then we check if the length minus one is equal double equal sign comparison um, make sure it's on the bottom if the majolo value is equal to that if so then uh, it's wrapping around and our new index is the majolo uh, one there so I don't really know how to clean this one up I'm not really gonna worry about it in this case since we're just gonna be reusing this over and over again but obviously we don't want stuff like this to clutter up our work so that's where stuff like this comes in very very handy it's just kind of sitting away and can be used at any time there I'm happy with that perfect alright so save we should be good now so now we can go back to our buttons bar and so all we're gonna do here is uh, we're going to increment and similarly we're going to decrement like so and so when we increment the new index goes into the option index and this is all false these are all false and we decrement it goes into there pretty easy all right, so let's see here. So um, let's comment these. Um, so increment, inc I'm just gonna go ink slash deck um, will focus and select widgets in the bar. If we have widgets in the bar um, and Priv, priv slash next um, uh, will will focus other widgets in the parent menu since um, button bars are always going to be horizontal due to our horizontal box container our button bars will always be horizontal thus next and previous will always work the same way is essentially what that is saying so I'm quite happy with that oh yeah and then we have our um, right here this one uh, forwards uh, button bar presses to any class listening Let's see if we can fit this in here and then we need one more and this one is well we still need a function technically I guess we'll probably knock it out um, what we need to do is we need event um, set is false focused and what that does right click remember add call to parent function the little known feature. So we just need new fake focus, new fake focus, skip UI sounds, skip UI sounds, and then just leave that like so. We don't want to accidentally be calling this and have it set that to true. It should be false. Because when we comment it, button bar, button bars um, will all, always focus the first child when gaining focus so um, if we're using the keyboard and we have say three buttons in our button bar it will always focus to the first one when we get to that button bar that's why we don't want to focus on last child so that is the event graph 
um, for our buttons bar which we will be using over and over and over to create many buttons bar that's why putting in the work now is going to save us a ton of time after because not only do we not have to create buttons over and over and over again we can just drag and drop basically and type in their names and have all this functionality available to us uh, we just need one function and I believe we'll be on our way so let's add a function which will just be simply get button and all that function is going to do is take in an index it'll be an integer and it'll be pure by the way um, it'll have um, button index or you could say child index if you wanted and then we need our BPI widget focusable this will be a button out all we do is take our uh, right click and from our parent class we get our focusable array get focusable array and off of that we get focusable widget from the array so we take our button index and if there is a widget instead of a button then we take um, the focused widget out as a button so it can be pressed or incremented or decremented or so on and so forth so compile save save everything and that is our button bar I believe um, we might as well work on our menu panel base since that's gonna be essentially where most of this stuff comes from I kinda wanna rename that now that we're giving this prefixes so I'm just gonna call this menu panel what is it complaining about the server list again okay so I'll go back to the server list this is how you fix that error by the way people always freak out about it you see what class it's complaining about it you just go and compile it so you'll see I can now save no problem so yeah our menu panel um, it's gonna have quite a bit of work to do on it yet but uh, we might as well get some done uh, let's do some overridden functions first. We want to override on key down. On key down. So it'll always come under the input category. There's no way to change that. And so what we're doing is we are just overriding um, this function here. The on key down function usually just returns itself, but we're going to override it. So what we want to do is we want to get key. So basically what key uh, was pressed during this event? Was it enter, was it spacebar, etc. And the in key event, so this is the key event structure, goes into the input. And um, we want to get player controller. And we want to cast to our player controller. And this will be imp here. And we're going to need room to work. So I'm going to leave that like that. Uh, what we're going to need is, and then we're going to need a function called handled. So this is just an event reply. Basically, did we handle the key press? Uh, or did we not and in this case we're gonna return that yes we did handle it in some way or form so all we need to do is go to our player controller I wish I could open it by double clicking on a cast that'd be nice BP player controller and we just need um, this one is gonna be fairly long so I'm gonna make it the last one so let's create a new function called on GUI key down and this one has one single input and don't let that which will be key don't let that uh, I'm gonna call this uh, key pressed don't let that fool you because this uh, this one sucks that's why we're creating it so that we don't have to use it over and over and over again 
for every time we need to override an on key down function in a widget. So first of all, we do in is valid. And what are we checking? We're checking our false folks widget if it's valid. And our key pressed is going to need to be rewritten, rewroted, sorry, rewritten, rewroted. Let's bring this back so it's nice. Actually, let's bring this up so it's nice and clean. I like lining up the dots like that. I find that looks the best. And so basically all this is going to do is it's going to, um, when we press a key, it's basically just going to uh, wrap input back around so that we're always, um, in case our menu uh, fails to take in any input. Um, it's an error that's plagued 3D widgets for a long time, and so this is just a workaround. So um, if it is valid, we're going to go to a branch. We're going to need lots of room. And so the first branch condition is an OR boolean with three pins. So right click, add pin, come on. Where are you? Add pin, there we go. So um, we want to check and you might have to change this depending on your setup, but uh, I've set this up for Nvidia Shield and Xbox One and most of your general gamepads should work. So we want gamepad left. I'm looking for a Boolean. I need to go from a key structure is equal to um, equal key, create three of these. I haven't done this in a while. I totally forgot about that. So create three of these uh, key structures. So all you do is you just type in double equal sign. It's basically checking um, if the key is equal to something and plug all three in. Give that some space because the first one is going to be gamepad, come on, gamepad left, thumbstick down. And then we're gonna have D-pad down, or just simply down. So again, that's keyboard and um, gamepad support. Whereas um, obviously the mouse is just gonna work on its own. Um, yeah, I'm gonna organize that like so. And so if this condition is true, let's see if I can bring this over a bit. If this condition is true, then we take our false focus widget and we um, focus on the next one. So focus next widget, and this is gonna be an interface call. I guess that wouldn't be focused. I should go in there and call that, where is it? Focus, not focused. Focus on the next widget and focus on the previous widget because that's what we're doing. We're focusing, not fo not already being focused. I'm going to put this up here, uh, although we're going to be reusing it a lot. Um, so if false, then we go into another branch. Now there is going to be a, uh, a BPM helper macro macro that I create that prevents us needing to do multiple branches on a chain like this, but this is one case where we do need a large chain of branches. Um, this one, if true, well, well, yeah, here it starts. So I will just leave this down here is going to be focus prev. No, that's not a message. That's an interface call prev interface. There we go. If true. So that handles true and false for down, down, and down. Set it up like that. And if false, we're gonna go into another branch. And if 
this one on true uh, I'm just gonna copy this to keep things clean if true it's gonna be a false press interface and I'll show you what buttons does this once we get there um, if false however though we go into yet another branch which if true we oops I guess I need to drag off here increment interface we increment whatever value needs to be turned up like I said say resolution or I don't know could be anything and we'll use it for a lot of things a lot of cool things once we get there um if false however we go into another branch which um if true will be a decrement interface call And lastly, if that is false, we go into one last branch, which will be back widget, back focused widget interface call. And there is no false. We go through all those checks and it better be one of them. Um, so let's finish the buttons now. So we did the first one for down, which focuses the next one or the previous if this one is an or as well. May as well just copy the or since it's always going to be three. Um, so this one is, and we might as well just copy this, I guess, since it's basically the same setup. Actually, you know what? Might as well just copy this whole setup and paste it and then just plug it into there and plug this into the top of all the wires. Like so. That works for me. All right, so uh, this one is gonna be up. So we'll go thumbstick up, and this is gonna be left thumbstick up. Um, we want D-pad up, and we just want the key up. And the next one, Let's paste again, put it in here. So this one should be for um, a press, yep. So plug these in, make a reroute right there. Cause I like things to be neat. So we want um, gamepad, or we want enter. We want a uh, space bar or uh, face button bottom. So that'd be the very bottom button on the face. So that'd be like your uh, X on your Xbox controller. Um, I think it's circle on PlayStation 3. I can't remember. Not much of a gamer. Um, the next one, so let's paste again. I think maybe I should bring all this up. Let's, uh, let's see, let's make another reroute and plug this in. Yeah, it's going to need a lot more room. A lot more. I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now though. Um, so this one is going to be right or uh, D-pad right or left thumbstick right. So this is, they're all left thumbstick to navigate through the menus or obviously the arrow keys and you could probably add like WASD on here if you wanted but since we'll be using 3D menus that uh that 
kind of defeats some of the purpose in certain instances if you wanted to be able to like walk around your menus um, you wouldn't want to do that but you could add W, A, S, and D in here if you wanted um, so the next one's just the inverse because that is to increment so right is increment left is decrement so this is going to be to turn any value down might as well save while we're at it because these suck to put together so this will be left thumb uh, left I guess left thumb stick left yeah I think I got that and then we want d-pad left and then we want left and finally the last one um, to go back we only need two for this one so I'm just gonna get rid of this one here remove pin otherwise it'll screw things up so this one will be um, escape obviously you could go backspace if you want this all depends on your menus and then this will be face button right so this would be um, you have your uh, four keys either in a diamond or a square this would be the one on the right and yeah that goes back so we just gotta plug this one in and we are done All right, cool. So let's comment this. So this um, in the event that our menu fails to uh, take input, um, then we wrap uh, menu input commands. instead perfect so let's compile and save and let's go back to our buttons bar really quick or sorry no we were working on our um, menu panel and we'll just quickly finish this so we take the return well we go off of the player control we go on GUI key down and the key pressed is going to be the return value here and I want that to be clean, so let's rewrote this up. And then this returns, we return it as saying that yes, we did handle this key press. Basically, um, we handle it, but if for some reason it screwed up, then it would be unhandled and it would just go back to stock. And we also want, if the cast fails, we want to return. So just in case, that's just leaving ourselves um, some, an extra safety. Uh, what do you, what the heck do you call it? Um, extra layer of safety there. So I'm gonna go something like that. Perfect, that's that. So just uh, override on key, on key down um, to gamepad slash keyboard support if focus is lost, basically. So compile and save. Um, I think we're gonna leave it there. Yeah, we'll finish the last couple functions uh, next time, I think. Cause we're getting pretty long. So yeah, um, next time what we'll do is we'll continue working on all of these base widgets. I promise you it's gonna save a lot of time. It's gonna make whatever game comes out of this in the end a lot more configurable um because if you wanted to add a new menu like we're gonna have to add vehicles if we want some sort of vehicle menu or a commander overview menu then instead of creating the whole widget from scratch all we do is we use these 
these base and parent classes to just create them boom 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 and if we need to change them instead of going and editing a bunch of logic we just uh we just have it there ready for us so yeah thanks for watching from the team here at unrealtech.net or divisionalbindertech.com if you enjoyed this video and learned something please like it subscribe we also take donations if you didn't like this video please let us know why so we'll see you next time remember create your way